Social Plug Podcast. What is going on, everybody? I am Johnny Martinez, and you are plugged into the Social Plug Podcast, where we connect you to level up, and where we discuss and highlight ordinary people doing extraordinary things. We are always powered by Social Plug Media. Today, we are in Collab Space Studios, our headquarters. If you ever want to co- have content created for you or host your own podcast, reach out to us at collabspacestudios.com. Today's podcast episode is sponsored by Top Flight Realty Group. This group of individuals can help you buy or sell your home with trust, faith, and confidence. Jessica Martinez is one of the best realtors in the business, has knowledge inside of the market, and can do it all. You can reach out to her at topflightrealtygroup.com. And we are live today. I love being on a live podcast with everybody. So if you guys are out there, chime in, reach out to us, give your questions. I got a very special guest today. But before I introduce that man, J-Rock, what is going on? What is up, my brother? We're doing good, man. I'm still on a high from yesterday, bro. Yeah, man. So <laughs> yeah, literally, literally, we were high, high up in the air, man. We were at Bar House San Antonio. <laughs> yeah, third floor, man. And that was awesome, bro. I was really appreciative of... Uh, Nick allowing us to come out there and do that, and that was a first for us to be on top of a, a roof and doing a podcast, man. We're moving up in the world, I guess. So Nick Marquez is a, is a good friend of ours. Previous, uh, he was on a podcast about a year ago, and he was talking about manifesting this this uh, this bar. Yeah. Because he owns bars here in uh, Cibolo Shirts, and uh, you know, uh, San Antonio is was one of his his big you know projects. So he did it. It's been open for about 10 days, and we had a blast there. We Thank had you, Jesse man. E. We had big uh, bad boy Ben Marungo. We had you. Uh, the wind was blowing, but it was just enough, man. It, it, didn't, it didn't deter anything, but, you know, we had drinks, and it was just a great time. So big shout-out to Bar House San Antonio, specifically Nick Marquez. That guy's doing big things. Heck yeah, man. So yeah. excited to go out there again and when we, you know, for any event that they're doing, but this Saturday is their uh, grand opening. So we'll see how things go, man. Yep. Heck yeah. Speaking of big things, our special guest, let me, let me kind of formally introduce this guy. Cause I think we all know who, who it is, right? <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give, uh, you know, some, some bullet points of what he does. He's, uh, he's in the air force right now. He's in the air national guard. So he's doing great things in, in recruiting. So he helps people change their lives, come into the air force, and be a part of that dynamic uh, and elite team. He's a leader. He's a community leader. He's a transformational coach. So he helps people not only with their finances, but with life coaching, uh, situational coaching, uh, anything that you can imagine. The guy is a wealth of knowledge. He's a co-host of the L3 Perspective, which the L3 is life, love, and leadership. So we'll get into that. He's a founder of the Forward Learning Group, which helps organizations and individuals elevate their people, processes, and programs to achieve success. Everybody wants to be successful. This is true. Right? And and can everybody achieve success? Yes, they absolutely can. There's barriers. There's mind barriers, and there's other situational barriers that keep people from success. So this man, he helps them navigate and pivot through whatever situation they're in and helps them to achieve success. So he's been in the Air Force for 18 years, and he's my friend, Cameron B. Macias. Oh, what is up, what's man? Up, Cameron? What's up, Cameron? Oh, I'm on the screen. <laughs> on the screen, man. Hell yeah. So it's cool that you have a podcast, but you're not the host this time. Yeah, this is... So th- you're popping my cherry right now. <laughs> this is my first in-person um, at someone else's studio, um, them producing it. What do you think about the studio? This is great. This is you guys are teaching me things. I love like the sharing of communi- you know, information. That's kind of the big thing because as you know, like a lot of people want to do it or say they're doing it, but mm-hmm. like to the scale that we're doing it is a lot different. Cameron, two of the most powerful things in the world are a microphone and a platform. Correct. Right. You and I have both. I'm getting some feedback on. I'm getting somewhere. a little echo. Is it somebody's phone? Just check, we'll just check it, real quick. It, it, might, it might be mine there, Lux. Hey, that's what happens when you're on a live that's feed. Right. Anything that's can right. happen, but you just go with it. That's right. Right? That's, I mean, why, that's why I want to go live. Yeah. I was like, yeah. bro, no, let's no, do no, it. No, yeah. So live is next level because you not only have to interact with the guest yep. and entertain the guest, but you got to entertain the audience as well. Correct. So we're going to do our best to inform, motivate, <laughs> inspire, there you go. educate, 
and entertain. Yes. Okay. So this is a myriad of all kinds of elements, man. So you have a, a great skill set that you've learned in the Air Force. We'll get into that. Yeah. And you have a great uh, resource power mm -hmm. that, you know, most people want to have. No, oh, yeah. Right. So <laughs> resource power and connection power, and relationship power are some of the things that you teach. Yes. As well. So I'm going to kind of let you kind of get into it. You know, you, you can introduce yourself a little bit, talk yeah. about what you do, and then we'll go from there, Cameron. Okay. So 18 years in the Air Force. Um, so I grew up only child, single mother, born in the San Francisco Bay Area. I went to 13 different schools growing up. And so although my mom apologizes for that to this day, I always tell her, like, there's nothing to be apologizing for because, as you guys know, growing up, it's like sink or swim. You go into a school, you either make friends or like you're rolling around the schoolyard by yourself. And so I learned from an early age how to communicate and build friendship and build relationships. And so, um, but wasn't the best student. So honestly, I'm, I don't do well in a structured school environment, which is funny because recruiting school is like hella structured. Like yeah, man. The Air Force shit. is very <laughs> structured because you, you have to test for promotions yeah. and test for certifications yeah. and things like that. And you have to be very structured with your plan. Correct. Because as a recruiter... You were out on your own. You're building yep. your own business. You're building your own right? business. And, uh, but I think what helped me was I'm a good test taker. Okay. It's like assignments that I'm like, meh. And so um, I was one of the only kids in high school my senior year that I was told I was not going to graduate. I was already signed up for the Air Force. I already had a job. I had a ship date. And I made it. Um, I always tell people I was meant to be a recruiter because I went to all my teachers mm -hmm. and said, what can I do? I have this path in front of me that's going to help set me up for life, but I'm already screwing it up. And they man, what kind of grades did you get, man? Uh, oh, bro. I mean, so <laughs> so uh, I fa almost failed PE because Gosh. I didn't want to wear the uniform. <laughs> so the Has money, that ever happened before? Anybody ever failed PE? Oh, man, <laughs> probably. My mom, the money my mom gave me to pay for my uniform, I like bought like Taco Bell or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so but I but I participated, but right. so it was a shock to me when the teacher was like, hey, bro, you're, you have like a D in PE or whatever. And I was like, how do I have a D? And he's like, well, you never wear a uniform. That's half your points for the day. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. And so <laughs> anyways, I ended up graduating, went to the Air Force, um, was actually supposed to go to Dover, Delaware. Okay. And um, I traded to come back home to Travis. One of the best and worst decisions I ever made. So Travis is by Sacramento. Yeah, Travis type. between San Francisco, Sacramento. Okay. And so my, my family, friends from high school were close by who I was gooning around with in high school. And um, he put me back home with money in my pocket. And my friends who really weren't doing much at the time. And so got in trouble there. Was fortunate enough that my work ethic saved me. Um, they believed that I could be saved. And so I, was, I went to Korea after that. Arkansas after that, and I got bored. I was like, yo, I need to do something else. And that's when DSD first came out. And uh, What's DSD mean? Developmental Special Duty Program. Okay. And so I call my uh, career field manager, which is the person who's in charge of all the people that do my job, and said, I need to do something. He said, well, we're going to need volunteers because a lot of people don't want to give up their people for this new program. Right. And so I put my name in the hat, became a recruiter, Got number 28 on my list, Slidell, Louisiana. <laughs> um, That's right by New Orleans. Right by New Orleans. Um, in between that time, though, from I actually I got an Article 15 out of Travis, which is like when you get in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And so, um, but I ended up being a Levito winner out of Little Rock. I was top graduate out of recruiting school. Um, and I pretty much won every award I can in the Air Force. But so, didn't, that didn't require classwork. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so before I get in, into that, did you have a father figure in your in your life growing up? So I had some father figures, like people that were associated with me and my mom. Uh, you know, prior boyfriends who, who who were good male role models, but obviously did not stay. Um, and but as far as my father being around, he was not. Um, and that was a decision on his part. It was a more of a religious decision just because um, he was Muslim and him and my mom weren't married. And that was, that's not okay within that particular right. religion at the time. And so he made that conscious choice to dip. Um, and, you know, shout out to my mom. She never was like, Oh, your dad, this, your dad, that she's like, look, this is the decisions that were made, but me and you as a family, we're going to, we're going to do it. And we did. Did you have a void growing up? Like, Hey, I don't have a, 
an actual father in the household. There was I a have, lot of I have these mean. different male yeah. role models, but I didn't have my dad. Yeah. I mean, I think yes and no. Like, it wasn't as big as it, pro it probably is for a lot of other people. And that's only because I always tell people, like, I grew up with, like, a lot of love in my house. Like, although I had my mom, um, but I had, like, my grandmother, my grandfather, and... I saw some people who have both parents, like, when their lives were shit. You were fucking their up. Their dad, like, beat them up or, yeah. uh, or mom, you know, whatever have you. But, like, just because they had both parents, their life was worse than mine. And so right. I, um, I would say that I got past the, like, woe is me stories. I always say that pretty quick. And even to this day when people are like, oh, you didn't have a dad. I'm like, I know a lot of people that had dads yeah. or both parents in general. And, like, it was, really wasn't that great. That's that's facts, straight facts, man. Because I see that <laughs> I see that often. Uh, when I was growing up in high school, some I mean, Hispanic guy on the south side yep. of San Antonio didn't have a lot of role oh, you're models. From here originally I'm from too. I'm oh, from San Antonio. Okay. Yep. I'm from the barrio, man. The barrio. Now, south side of San Antonio. I'm watching so, a lot of snow snowfall lately. So I was <laughs> I was fortunate to have both parents, and they taught me work ethic and yes. and confidence, and you know, just treating people good. But I saw others that had both parents as well and they, yeah. were, they were fucking up man. oh yeah bad so it's circumstantial and i think it's internal it is but on the back of your mind though it makes you a success story correct because you did it yes just like you did you talked about your accolades in the air force yeah so you were a i wouldn't say you were a troubled kid but you didn't you weren't a good oh, a yeah. good student i had a, I had a lot right? of troubles <laughs> right? but were you easily influenced by by bad things and i would say i was easily influenced um at a younger age i think i was always looking for that connection okay because Moving around through different schools, you're trying to find your place. Um, finding my place, it's hard when you only stay at one place for a year, maybe a year mm -hmm. and a half. I think the longest I stayed in a certain area going to school was like two and a half years, something like that. And so um, that was one of the reasons I actually moved to Sacramento from the Bay Area was because I was getting involved with the wrong people. And my mom saw the writing on the wall and was like, I'm getting you out of here. Right. Yeah. And that was the right choice. Very right choice. Yeah. So you joined, <laughs> so you joined the Air Force, and then you finally got structure. Yeah. You were like, man, this this is this is it. Bigger bigger <clears throat> scope. Change your mindset. Team. Correct. I'm, and I'm working on a team that uh, encompasses the entire world. Yeah. Right. So that changed your perspective. And how did that change your perspective? Um, I think just like being a part, like we all chose to be there, and I thoroughly believe that it's pro it's one of the best decisions anybody can make. Um, I wouldn't be where I was. I've seen a lot of people where they wouldn't be where they were had it not been for just that initial structure. Mm -hmm. No one says you got to do 20 years, you know, whatever. But like just learning at how much can be accomplished when you are thinking two steps ahead is, is a skill I think like most people don't get um, really accustomed to until they've probably fell so many times. They're like, oh, shit, I need some structure yeah. in my life. Uh, but it was – but it also – was cool because you met all these people from all over the place, right? You know, I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't know what Mossy Oak was until I was like twenty four. What the hell is Mossy Oak? It's, you don't know? What, oh, you don't know what it is? <laughs> no, Mossy oh. Oak is either. What's Mossy Oak? Oh, really? Uh -uh, what oh, is I get it? to teach right. you guys another we're, thing. So okay. I said we're gonna we're gonna educate <laughs> yeah. today, right? So Ma so Mossy Oak is like the camouflage pattern that a lot of people use to go hunting, but it's also like its own brand. So anyways, when mm. I was in Korea, one of my friends was from Missouri and they were talking about, he would always wear this camouflage. I was like, well, dude, why do you wear camouflage out all the time? Like, this is downtown South Korea. And he's yeah. like, it's Mossy Oak, bro. And I was like, I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> and he's like, you serious? I'm like, dude, I'm from San Francisco Bay Area. Like, yeah. if, it's not a, if it's not concrete, BART, or a bus, then yeah, it shits me. <laughs> and so, <laughs> but like, that's, you know, leaving was one of the, you know, I didn't go back to California full time for 11 years after I left the first time. And so that was, that was that chance for me to grow into who I was away from all the people who were saying the same shit that I said on a daily basis. Like I'm, I, you gotta leave. I'm a firm, firm believer and you have to leave your local area to really become who you are and then, and then potentially return to bring that, like, you know, that global knowledge back. Right. So you talked about learning about different uh, people, but different cultures yep. is is a, is a valuable thing, man. Definitely. Growing up, I said I was from the barrio, right? So <laughs> all I knew was barrio people. Yep. Right. Um, people that were, I mean, obviously Hispanic or Mexican mm -hmm. uh, descent. And when I joined the Air Force, I saw black people. Yep. 
Asian, yeah, uh, German. I saw everything, yeah. and I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, this is pretty cool because now I'm learning about these people, yep. and they're they're okay in my book for because sure. in in the military, you 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 serve not only for the world, but you serve uh, for. I mean, there's different reasons. I wanted to serve to to travel and to meet different people, and yeah. and, and I I was fulfilled yeah. with that, and I wanted to learn about different things, and I'm a firm believer. If you learn about different cultures, it makes you a more rounded person. Definitely. Because you're not so judgmental. Correct. And you're not narrow-minded. Yep. And we have a lot of narrow-minded people in the world today. <laughs> Very. Right? So the military did that for me. Yeah. And it made me look at people from a different lens. I agree. From a, from, a, from a lens where I wasn't judgmental. Yeah. So do you see that as well? I do. Uh, I will say, like, I always talk about this too. Like, when I grew up, I think it's also geographical. Mm -hmm. Like, how much emphasis people put on things. You know, when I lived in the Bay Area, I only knew what nationality my friends were, maybe because I was, like, learning more about their culture. I hung out with a lot of Asian kids in the mm -hmm. Bay Area. Um, not until I moved to Sacramento was, like, everybody so concerned about where you were from. Like, are you mm -hmm. Hispanic? Are you uh, Filipino? I didn't know what a Filipino was until I was 17. Mm -hmm. Even though I had friends my whole life who were Filipino. But it's because... What did you think they were? That you think they were they were Mexican, or what did you think they were? I never even heard the term Filipino. Really? Literally, like oh, wow. I literally, my grandma got lumpia from the Filipino woman she worked with, and we would eat it probably once a month. Didn't even know that was a Filipino thing. Dude, I love lumpia. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I don't know what that is. So, either. but when I moved to Sacramento, that's when it was like yeah. everybody was so yeah. overly concerned. And then, and then, um, and in the military, I feel like it was less of like what nationality you are, and then yeah. it was like where are you, like what yeah. state are you from? Right. Right. Dude, now that I'm older, I'm American. Yeah, yeah. I'm not Mexican my wife and or anything like that. My I'm wife American, and I have that bro. conversation. It's like, yo, you're like, we're, we're all Americans. Yeah. yeah. I'm born in the United States, yep. so I'm freaking American. That's right. it. There's no other way around it. Yep. And, you know, that's just being the, the elder statesman that I am. But when okay. I was younger, we would categorize ourselves into different Yeah, there's like Mexican-American, white, like all these things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's way different. So let's fast forward. So you've been in the Air Force for 18 years. Yep. All right, and what's your what's your path after after twenty years? Because you're about uh, to retire. Are you? You're oh yeah, be eligible I, I, I to will, retire. I will, I will, I'll be eligible. Um, right, so, so my company, um, you know, I am building my company with uh, my three other amazing partners, my mm -hmm. best friend and his wife, uh, Glenn and Tegan, and then my wife, and ultimately, like, I want to be a resource, and I feel as though me being employed is not me really being a resource. Um, because at that point, someone else is deciding how I get to be a resource. Mm. So what do you mean, be a resource? Um, I've learned a lot of things in my tenure in the military, just my interactions and like being able to really help people or organizations mm -hmm. like get further. I would only be, I would be limited in the capacity that I could do that if I was clocking in and clocking out for somebody. So this is the forward learning group and yes. you are the CEO. Correct. And you have a team of how many? Three? Uh, so there's three of us who are all owners. Okay. So I started it, um, I started it two years ago. I was reading a John Maxwell book and in there, there was a quote that said, if you're not moving forward as a learner, you're moving backwards as a leader. And I was just like, forward learning group. I was sitting there, I remember sitting there with my wife. And um, you're like, that is that's it. it. That's it. That's so it. I, so I started it and it was, it was me just uh, initially. But <clears throat> between the partnership that me and Glenn have um, built, I always said, man, like, I really want you to be in this with me. And, and if you are willing to do this, 5149. So why did you choose the team that you have? Because um, I can trust them. I that's can trust a, all of them. I can trust of all of them. You know, like when people meet Glenn and I, they they all it's pretty much guaranteed they're gonna comment at how well we our dynamic is. So I'm a little bit more like bull in the china shop, like, what's up, make mm -hmm. it happen, move, get mm -hmm. it to me, let's go, data, what's it say? Um, Glenn is is the nurturer. Like he is the person, like he gets asked all the time, are you gonna run for for office? Just because of the way that the way that he moves and how much he really cares, like for every single thing that he says. And that's not to say that I don't care. It's just I'm a little bit more analytical. And so uh, we have this joke where if you ask Glenn and I to introduce ourselves, I'm going to be like, hey, I'm Cam, CEO, former learning group, here to be of value in any way I can. And then like cut it off. Mm -hmm. Glenn's the guy that's like, I just want to thank everybody for their shoes, for walking <laughs> you up in this yeah. door. I want to thank 
the sun for being out today. And so that like we, you know, it's a good feed off of each other because um, we ground one another in certain ways. Right. That's like being Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was listening to Andy Frizzell this morning and someone asked that question is like, that's my guy. man. That's my dad. And so, yeah. you know, it's someone he did. Someone asked the question of like, hey, I'm younger running a business with someone who's older. I'm more high speed. This person is older, a little bit more calm and methodical. Mm. And he was like, dude, keep that person. If you guys are on the same page, because they even said like, we're on the same page in every other fashion, but sometimes I feel like they're not as fast as me. And it's like, yeah. they're not supposed to be. Yeah. You, I, got, you got to balance. Yeah, I think that is us, Johnny. Because like, even like me, like I don't, I I appreciate Johnny. And I, I told him this the other day, like I want to, I want to be every part of who he is as, as a person. But <laughs> at the end of the day, like it's, to me, it's tough to be who he is with other people. He's very talkative in, in many ways. That's not you. And sometimes that isn't me. Like, yeah. I just want to just get straight to the point. And, uh, like, <laughs> earlier we had a uh, person come into the studio. I'm like, hold on, let Johnny come and explain a little bit more of who he <laughs> is and who his podcast is. Because I can't talk for him as well, you for know sure. what I mean? But, yeah, I feel like that's a little bit of us, too. That's cool, though, to have that relationship with yeah. somebody. Yeah. Well, trust so, is big, man. Yeah. So J-Rock and I are married on the podcast. That, that's that's And that's my work wife, I would say. Because <laughs> I can't say he's my work husband. Because then that'll that'll be weird. That's kind of weird. Right? <laughs> and then he could probably call me his work wife. Right? Yeah, but we sure. work yeah, well yeah. together, J-Rock and I. Glenn's laughing, so apparently yeah. he, he approves. Yeah. So, so J-Rock and I, are, are we're the dynamic duo, man. I talk strategy. And he talks technical on on this podcast. Okay, I can't do what he does. Oh yeah, that's the same thing too. Yeah, yeah I'm the tech guy. I cannot <laughs> do anything that he does. He has just a different mindset. Yeah, and he has all these these uh, his eyes just focus a little bit deeper onto what the presentation is. And we yeah. talked about it at lunch. Yes, presentation is everything for sure. How you look, how you sound, uh, how the lighting is. I mean, and he makes us look good. Yeah. So big shout out to that man. Shout I, out to J Rock. I, I, I Thanks, couldn't do the man. podcast without without J Rock. Definitely. So he's definitely a big part of this, and I'm confident uh, in in him to to get the job done. Yeah. You know, and I trust and him. And you should to be. get the job done. You should be. So just like you and Glenn. Yes. You you both can't be strategists. Correct. One's got to be analytical. One's got to yeah. be strategy, and yeah. so on. And one of you has to represent the masses. So yeah. he he represents by saying, "Hey, everybody." Uh huh. Thank you for coming in today, yeah. and I'm gonna make you feel good, yep. and you know, rub your backs and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> you know, virtually. Yes, but it works. Yeah, he's the guy I call before I send an email. Yeah, and I say, hey man, I need you to be 100% honest with me. Mm -hmm. Do you, well, one, I don't want to misrepresent our company. Right. Two, I need you to to ground me if if maybe I'm overlooking something or maybe I'm overreacting. Right. And 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 if he says you're overreacting or this or this, then it's off. The email's changed or it doesn't get sent. Mm -hmm. But if, if that man says, nah, you good, bro, that, I don't click that shit fast <laughs> yeah, as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you, you guys ever have, and I know he's watching, do you guys ever uh, you have little little spats? Not really. Um, we have disagreements. I mean, obviously, there Well, are, that's what I meant. Like a yeah, little, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Like so you don't always agree on everything. Uh, generally, we agree on most things. Um, and I think that just becomes because we've spent so much time together that we... Mm -hmm both understand probably where the other person's thought process is. Um, however, there are times where uh, I would say he probably more so is like, I don't, I don't agree with that or, and, or I think we could go about that a different way to get better results. Do you think that's healthy? hundred percent. You have Absolutely. to have it. You have to have it. You need it, man. Yeah. I can't be right about shit all the time. No. <laughs> and, if, and, and if you guys agree on everything, uh, yeah. then something's wrong. Correct. You cannot yeah. agree on yeah. everything 100% yeah. of the time. And that's time. why I brought them in is too, is like I tell people like I'd rather have 50% of something than 100% of nothing. Yeah. Yeah. And so like we have board meetings. Every month we have board meetings. We go over the budget. We, we go over the projects, everything. And, and during that whole time, feedback is, is um, necessary. Whether it's Glenn, whether it's Tegan, whether it's Net. If someone says I don't agree, we talk. We talk about yeah. it, and I need that. Like you know, there was one time when we were doing something, and I, it was funny. I was telling my wife, I was like, "Man, I just, I really want to do this, and if they say no, I'm gonna be pissed." And she's like, "That's why you have the board, though, because yeah. if three out of four people say no, it's a no." Man, I, uh, go, I'm sorry, no, go go ahead, Jerry. I was gonna say, okay, so how did you? Were, or were you a person that would be that guy? Like you want. 
maybe whatever it is, did you have another business or maybe just decisions in life? Like, are you okay with somebody telling you no in ways? And then now it's a business part of it mm -hmm. now, right? So like, is how do you feel about that? You know, how have you felt about that? So, I mean, getting told no as someone who's like trying to do it. Yeah. Can be hard, obviously, mm -hmm. especially if you like believe in something you want to do, right? If you're like, mm -hmm. oh, this is going to help us and we need this. It's hard to relinquish the power of like, but if but if the other folks say no, yeah, then it's a no, right? But you have to be self aware to understand that's the whole reason you're in this. Like yeah, you can't do it, true. you can't do it yourself. Like mm -hmm. collaboration, you I mean, this place is called the collab space for a mm -hmm. reason because through collaboration, um, you build nations. Right. I think mm -hmm. or Glenn always says that, right? And so I a hundred percent will not say it's always easy, but it is always necessary. Yeah. That's what's up. Thank we you. need collaboration, man, especially mm -hmm. in the world today. You know how much the, the world would be more um, in unison if oh, people yeah. just fucking collaborated <laughs> instead of being against each other, whether yeah. it be in the United States? Well, everyone's so worried about um, what's in it for them. The whiff them. Mm -hmm. Yes. The whiff them yeah. statement. And right everybody up. has some kind of agenda to make themselves yeah. be on top or they, they don't want to relinquish power yeah. and all these things, man. And not to get into politics, but if the Republicans and Democrats just work together, yeah. the world's a better and safer and stronger place for, sure. for everybody. For sure. But there's egos. Oh, ego, there's, ego will destroy you. There, there's, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of things, man, that uh, screw up businesses, screw yep. up relationships. And there's so many variables. Yeah. So having a good, mm -hmm. trusting relationship with you and Glenn and the rest of the team, yeah. J-Rock and I oh, and everybody yeah. else that we associate with, yep. is, is so uh, vital to success. Mm -hmm. And once people understand that, yeah. then we'd all be better for it. Yeah. You so, know, yeah, Johnny's, Johnny's one of the first guys that I've ever met that actually, we both have, we, I don't know, I had an ego, bad. Like, <laughs> For real, it's man. Okay, and and uh, you're yeah, right. And it kind of like checked me because I was like, I want to work with this guy. And I'm seeing that I, my personality and how hard I'm like coming out with, you know, ideas or, or strategies. Like sometimes I'm like, man, I'm being too hard ass. Like and because mm. nobody ever told me, hey, bro, why don't you just shut the fuck up <laughs> and listen a little more? You know what I mean? And, yeah. and he didn't necessarily tell, tell me that. But I was just older and wiser enough because I'd have been around the right people to yeah. understand that. And I'm glad that I did because if I would have treated him like I did everybody else when I was younger, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ego, so. man, will destroy you. Like, not enough people are prepared to check themselves in the mirror yeah. with their ego. And, it, and, and, it's, and it's relevant in how you see them approach life on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about that, like, on lunch, you know. There's a difference between being um, confident in what you do and then just being an asshole. Mm -hmm. Just to, you know. You can't think you're better than anybody else, No, you can't else, think man. you're better than everybody. You really, truly have to lift people up. If, yeah. you, if, if you see yourself on this platform, lift people up yeah. to get there. And you'll not only build credibility, but you'll build generosity. You'll right. build happiness. You'll build all these elements in yourself, and people will see that. Yep. But too often, people are assholes, yep. and they're trying to keep people down. Right. That's well, the wrong way. Because they think they're going to take something from them. No. It's like, dude, there's yeah. Yeah. so much more to go around. Like, I see that in a lot yeah. of businesses, not only yeah. here, but across yeah. America. Mm -hmm. If people collaborated and said, you know what? You're in the same industry as me. You do the same exact thing as yeah. me, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. You think HEB and Walmart are at each other's throats? Are CVS and Walgreens, McDonald's and Burger King? No, there's market sharing yep. involved. Everybody wins, just like in business. But once people can grasp that concept that we're better together, yep. I truly believe that we're all going to, you know, profit from it. Hundred percent. And you know, profit not doesn't mean money. Yep. It just means your, your the easing of your burden, the weight on your shoulders, everything. It lets you sleep better at night as well. Agreed. Because burdens uh, and stress are a real freaking thing, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this business, uh, Forward Learning Group, mm -hmm. so how do you help people specifically level up? So people, processes, or programs. Mm -hmm. So the people portion. So as we're seeing right now, a lot of businesses are struggling to hold on to their people um, and or entice new talent. I mean, you know, we talk about military recruiting. We're having the same problem, right? There's, there's a different mindset when it comes to today's environment. Mm -hmm. And so 
the people portion of it is we can come in and we can look at your recruiting processes, mm -hmm. your retention processes. Hey, how are you bringing people on, but how are you also keeping them? Right. Um, the second piece of that is how are you uh, uplifting your people? People don't want to just go to a job anymore and then just be there. People want to go to a job and feel like that organization is investing in them in some form or fashion. And so that's why, you know, you have a lot of people who complain about the, um, oh, people just come to work, do their job, go home. I mean, as you paid them to do. And if you're not investing any more into them, why should they invest any more into your right. organization, you know? Uh, some people might not agree with that, but that's my personal opinion. I don't, you know, and so we help with that. We do, you know, coaching, communication, multi-generational communication is a huge one for us right now. <laughs> that's kind of the the big request as far as to kind of discuss because we have the largest um, uh, workforce right now with four different generations. That's never happened in society. And everybody's fighting about how to do things their way, right? And so processes wise, a lot of businesses haven't broke down their processes. They're just running and gunning on a daily basis. What Glenn and I will do is come in and we'll break down all the processes, you know, from this podcast, right? Like, it was really easy. I hit you up. I said, I'd like to come on. You said, hey, here, what days work? Here's the invoice. Be here at this time. Boom. There's a process. You obviously thought about that process. Mm -hmm. But but think about how many businesses don't. They're just like, oh, if someone calls me, I'll figure it out in the moment and make it happen. Mm -hmm. And or they haven't evaluated their process with new technologies. Maybe your process worked three years ago perfectly fine. But in 2024, about to be 2025, you could revamp your process and make it even more efficient, make it more profitable, save you time and money. Right. You know? And so, um, so that's the processes piece, right? And then as far as programs is concerned, we actually came up with a software solution. Uh, right now, we're specifically helping nonprofits, but we're going to grow to for-profits that allow them to see real-time data in the moment that not only helps them track the metrics for their business, but also helps them tra tra track metrics to get more money for grants. That's awesome. Dude, you gave a lot of uh, There's different a lot in information. There. There's a lot in there. So I'm going to kind of dissect. So yeah. you started off at the top, managers versus leaders. Yeah. Right? And I've seen a lot of businesses fail because you have managers, micromanagers, yep. that don't allow their people to make decisions, don't allow their people to lead. Empowering them. People want to lead. Yep. Right? In some capacity, whether they lead in their own little circle, yep. lead themselves, some people don't even feel like they can lead themselves in an organization. Correct. Yeah. And if you feel powerless, yeah. you're going to get the hell out of that, that organization. Agreed. And then the retention problem is going to be very, very big. Mm -hmm. And I've seen companies, I've seen even military, where they can't keep people on board because they don't get treated well. Correct. And it's no military branch specifically, but I've seen it. It's, it's yeah. I mean, all the time. Yeah. Oh, screw that. I'm, I'm out. They aren't treating me good. And yeah. there's too many uh, hamstrings. And it... it leaders can change the culture, man. And we talked 100%. about culture earlier. I worked for a lot of micromanagers that didn't <laughs> allow me yeah. to, to grow and develop as a, as a man or mm -hmm. as, a, as a young person. Yeah. And I didn't feel valued. And if I continued working in environments like that, there's no way I can have a podcast. There's no way I can have the skills today that will enable me and allow me to mentor and coach. Yeah. Um, I can mo coach and mentor because I've gone through those things, for sure. those negative and toxic leaders, but I've also had inspirational leaders. I've had those leaders that say, Johnny, I see the value in you. I see your potential. I want you to go out there and make this decision. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put you in charge of this program, yeah. put you in charge of this team. Mm -hmm. And man, that made a huge difference. Oh, not yeah. only in, Because now they've enabled me to go out there and make a difference in the lives of others. Same, right. same with you. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. 100%. And I just love that. And I know you got a lot of those skills being in Air Force <laughs> recruiting. Yeah. Right? Because that's where I got a lot of my skills, too. Mm -hmm. So I give a, a lot of the what I have today, it's because of the Air Force, man. Yeah. And just the connections and the resource. The skill set that we, that we have oh, yeah. in Air Force recruiting, is yeah. it's a business skill set. It's a business skill set. I mean, and you have to run it on your own. It's an enterprise, and it's a corporate mindset. Yeah. It's a strategic mindset. And that's why Justin and I, we a lot of the things we do here oh, is, your government is, is based off of <laughs> yeah, a lot of this stuff is yeah, it's based off of Air Force recruiting. And yeah. it's, it's weird because we're not recruiting anybody. But the recruiting concept is there. 
you're inspiring, engaging, motivating people mm -hmm. to accomplish something bigger than themselves. Yeah. Right. And that's what we're doing on this podcast. Yeah. I sh shout out to Chief Master Sergeant Vogel, retired, mm -hmm. because when I came into recruiting, he took me out, you know, he did my little zone yeah. drive around mm -hmm. and he said, hey, you know, you're married, right? And I said, yep. And he said, you got kids, right? And I said, yep. And he said, that sounds like a grown ass man. To me. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. so do what you're supposed to do. And we have no problems, my guy. Hey. That's it. And and that's exact. And 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 he stayed true a hundred percent to his word. I did what I was supposed to do, and man, I was king of that. I was king of my office. Oh yeah. And 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 I had a hundred percent support. And you know, um, I I say a lot of times like between him, my boy Roy, and um, some of the things that people have shown me in recruiting, like my life will not be where it's at. Yeah. It's a life changer, man. It's a life changer. And I said it on a previous podcast, if people knew what the Air Force had yeah. to offer, there'd be a line all the way down to the Alamo Dome. Oh, yeah. Well, people... Right now. Perspective. I used to right. tell people I don't recruit. I provide perspective. Right. I give solutions to problems. I give solutions problems. to problems. Right. I'm not in sales. <laughs> I'm in solutions. Correct. And that's that's what you do. So how many people, on average, a month do you, do you help? Um, so, I mean, right now, podcasting has been really big for us. So all of our businesses and all the things that we have our hands and really all kind of happened um, organically. Mm -hmm. So what start, you know, first it started out with Glenn and I doing a lot of workshops. Um, we do a lot for the base out there. That's our way of giving back just because Glenn is retired as well, 21 years in the Air Force. And so we do our presentations for the airmen on Travis Air Force Base for free. And so we started doing that, building our name up, building relationships. And then at that point... Um, we started a podcast because Glenn, the L3 perspective was actually on his whiteboard for like two or three years. And when we talk about relationships, there's the execution piece, right? Like you couldn't set all this stuff up. J-Rock's here to execute yeah, on that. I you have know? no idea how to set No, that's what I mean. So, you know, and then the talking piece, that's obviously your still say. Mm -hmm. And so when Glenn and I really started working together, he told me about his podcast and I said, but I can do, I can set it up. I can do the technical mm -hmm. stuff, but I wanted, I want a good idea though. And so we sat down, did it, and then we built it. And as we built it, people then wanted to um, come on the podcast, but then also wanted us to produce it for them. Yeah. So the same thing you guys are doing here, we started doing out there where we're at. And so then virtual assistants. You know, I had a virtual assistant. She and her team honestly helped us 10x our business. And so when I started singing those praises, people then what? Well, how do I... Like, what could I do? Yeah. So then I had a meeting with my VA team and said, hey, what would it look like for us to provide this service to other people? Do you have do you have other people who, who are qualified? Well, so then we built that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, on average right now, we're probably signing anywhere from five to 10 contracts a month. You're changing lives, man. Yeah. You're, you're helping them. You're helping them grow. Yeah. How, how many podcasts are you all doing uh, right now? Like shows? So right episodes. now. So right now, currently two by January 1st, seven. Wow. As of right now. Okay. Um, and then as far as uh, virtual assistant clients, we have seven, and it'll probably grow to 15 by January. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I, what, uh, Johnny, we've never really talked about this on the podcast, too. Like, Johnny gave me a call one day, and we were working with another group, and he was just like, hey, do you think we can do this? Mm -hmm. You know? And I was like... Yeah, I and and at that time, I'm not gonna lie, I lied to Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you gotta, yeah. sometimes you gotta convince. <laughs> yeah, and and I and the reason why I said that is because I believed in what I can do, and I've been wanting to do this for years. I was, I was, I went, to, I was trying to go to school to be an actor when I was 18, 19, and just never left. What? Right? Yeah, I never did, man. And main thing was like what you said, which I took that by heart a lot by saying you got to leave here sometimes, and I should have left. Yeah, because. My brain and my mindset of like where I wanted this shit to go was way past this town. Nobody oh, yeah. was doing even thinking about podcasting, yeah. right? So, um, but again, going back to me and Johnny, like it was just an idea, and and I lied to him. But I mean, the thing was, was when he said yes, and I saw that he was invested. I'm like, all right, we're gonna, I'm gonna learn the shit out of this, you know? Yeah. Um, but where did that process come for you on like having the courage to be like, we can do podcasting? Like, were you always into podcasting as well? So. Glenn always tells me that um, he likes seeing me most when I'm doing the podcasting and setting up, and I and it's because that's my creative that's my creative space. Mm. I'm not good at like you know Photoshop and stuff like that, but like this like technology video recording, I have always been into it um, nice. since 
I was a kid, right? And so now that I get to do it and then also then help people do it and just always like growing with it, right? Like, oh, like I can change the camera angle or I could figure out how to do the lights better. Or, you know, we just renovated the studio. Now, like the color that we chose pops. Is that funny? We had, like, we have the same color scheme. That's what I was meant to Oh, do. really? And so, yeah, <laughs> like the purple, right? And so um, for me, that's really kind of like where I'm able to thrive is in the storytelling space. Right. Nice. That's what I enjoy. Like I, it's, I'm always going to give you a story. I'm always going to have a tell a story. I tell people all the time is I may not remember your name, but I remember your story. Yeah. Did you, what came, where did that come from? Um, like honestly, I think story just moving around so much. Just storytelling? Like, like wanting I mean, to tell. Well, I, well, I heard everybody's story. I mean, you gotcha. go to 13 okay. different schools growing yeah. up. Yep. You hear hundreds, if not thousands mm. of stories. Right. Yeah. And then, and then recruiting is the same way. Right. It's like, everybody has a story right and so and i think that's awesome. a lot of people don't believe that their story is important yeah yeah and i think i mean that's mine came from pro wrestling i watched all the vignettes and things like that i've always loved i love the way wwe told stories you I know what the, i mean I used to, man, I used and, to love WWE. <laughs> yeah and that's, <laughs> and that's where like my that's what me wanting to tell stories comes from so sorry if i got in the middle of your question as well johnny no, no you're good you're good, you're yeah. good. uh dude his passion is wwe that's awesome. If you, if you yeah. throw him a bone and say WWE, he, he'll, he'll, he'll eat it up. So, it was so, so, it was podcast. so he, also has, he also has a podcast, yeah, J-Rock, his own podcast called yeah. Kick Rocks. Kick Rocks, yeah. I love talk, that name, by the way. Where they Thanks, talk man. about <laughs> wrestling. Yeah. So I think everybody is a storyteller to some uh, yeah. capacity. 100%. And we all have the potential to be storytellers. Yep. And everybody has a potential to have their own podcast yep. or some kind of uh, content uh, platform. Yeah. Right, but we just don't know it because the trend of podcasting, it's going full bore, man. For sure. From people like Joe Rogan and Andy Frischella and all mm -hmm. these people, people are now starting to notice podcasts are king dingling. Oh, yeah. The days of just having a little segment on, on the news or whatever mm -hmm. for three or four minutes talking about your business, talking about yourself, those days, I mean, are still here, but it's not as effective and as impactful. Yeah. But when you and I can sit here or any guest... Mine are your guests on our on our platforms mm -hmm. and talk for an hour, hour and a half yep. about the relationships, the humanistic side behind yeah. the business card, like Jerry Salceda says, for right? Sure. Behind the business card, what else is there? What value do you, can you provide? And how cool of an individual are, are you? And how can <laughs> I relate to you? That's impactful. 100%. And hopefully people are listening that you can inspire and say, man, anybody can do this. Oh, yeah. Because we're nobody special. Mm -hmm. We just happen to have a skill set that we've uh, grown. I mean, that's grown on us. Yeah. And repetition and uh, longevity <sighs> is the key to success. Mm -hmm. It builds credibility, right? For sure. So you're building it. We're all building it. Yep. And people out there are, are just don't know that they can do it. For sure. So what you and I love to do is help people. Yep. I, I mean, I can I can honestly say that from the bottom of my heart, you like helping people. Yep. It's been proven. You have yeah. proven results. But podcasts can definitely help people get their, oh, yeah. get their name out there. Well, it's even if it's like, I think a lot of people get hung up on the money of it or mm -hmm. like the metrics of it, right? And it's like, it can build so much confidence and mm -hmm. it's like therapeutic. Like a yeah. lot of my clients, when they get done recording for the first time, they're just like, Oh, wow, that just felt great. Like just talking and like it's scary to be on camera, of course, at first. But once you get through it, like Glenn was not, a re he'll tell you, he hated the camera when we first started. <laughs> it was not, I mean, after we got done, I'd be like, all right, look, man, you got to like, you know, like pay attention to this. You know, and, and now, now he's a natural, right? Like he actually has grown to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And That's so, true. but initially it was because a lot of people don't, um, they don't want to be like on the limelight. And it's like, but you have to understand is like when you tell your story or you talk about the things that you talk about, people are seeing it. People mm -hmm. are watching it and you never know who you're going to inspire. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If you have that mindset, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Doing a podcast for me is very therapeutic. Yeah. Because I cannot, I'm, dude, me and you are building a relationship yeah. right here yep. on the live set. The live. This is the most we've ever talked before, right? Yep. We talked yep. at lunch for a little bit. Yeah. But having this Normally conversation, like, like messages back and forth, yeah. like love what you're doing. <laughs> I mean, how how cool is that though? To yeah. people that are watching, you and I are building a rapport here, 100%. and um, 
that's going to be documented yeah. forever. As long as the internet and cell phones exist, yeah. this is going to be a documented mind, conversation. <laughs> yeah. And so, so this is like getting a full body massage. For me. Yeah. You know, this is We're massaging your soul. Yeah, massaging my soul. I, I got somebody in my heart just doing this. Just I'm going to put that on my massage. wall in my office. Like, <laughs> right. Come massage your soul and record a yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah. But the confidence um, that it builds in people. Yes. Because like you, you mentioned, Glenn wasn't that confident. Yeah. But now Glenn is confident. So sure. I'm all about intangibles, things you can't touch, Correct. right? You can't touch confidence. You can't yep. touch leadership. Yep. You can't touch organization. You can't touch uh, all these different things. You cannot touch them, but you right. can feel them. They're in you. Yeah. And it rubs off on people. For sure. The inspiration is an intangible. Yep. And well, your uh, DJ was talking about that when he he was saying that he was talking to one, uh, someone that he knows and he was telling them that. Right now is the time to be learning. Yeah. Don't be so concerned about the money you get. Right. And it's not it's not all about money. Yeah. I mean, we don't we don't get rich off this podcast. Yeah. But you know what it builds? It builds credibility. Mm-hmm. It builds confidence and it builds relationships. Yeah. And it builds an ability for me to speak to the masses. It builds <laughs> an ability for you to speak to the masses and mm-hmm. J Rock and anybody else who comes on. Mm-hmm. So we're always trying to inspire and motivate people to come on. And build their own podcast as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, you have everything you need here. Facts. So those of you watching, can you just, that have never been on a podcast before, can you just imagine you and a colleague sitting down having a conversation? Mm-hmm. And that's going to be documented and people are going to be watching. And I mean, that's pretty freaking cool stuff, oh, yeah. man. So the L3 perspective, how long have you been doing this podcast? Uh, so we are on season two. Okay. So... So Glenn and I were driving the other day and we were thinking about this and we were like, oh man, we started this, you know, two years ago, 18 months ago, something like that. And I was like, bro, I feel like we've been doing this years (laughs) just because what we've accomplished. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Glenn and I started really working together about three years ago, no, two and a half, almost three years ago um, in the financial industry. And then it just grew from there. And so, but to think about where we were from the day he sat at my my kitchen table and we decided to come go into business together to where we are now, I'm like, man, there's people that have been in business together for 10 years that haven't accomplished the things that we've accomplished. Right. And it's hard to believe what we've been able to do once we like really magnified our efforts cohesively towards our the goals that we have. Um, so, anyways, two years. Um, the first season was mainly virtual as we're like kind of built, as you guys know, like you build kind of your rhythm. Mm -hmm. Well, season two, we said, you know what? All in person, you know, if you want to come on, we don't care if you're overseas, we don't care where you're at. You flying, you driving, otherwise catch us on season three when, and, and if you're here and that has worked really well because when you talk about building credibility, it has honestly allowed us to build not just credibility, but relationships in our Mm -hmm. community. Um, You know, a lot of our guests that have come on are people that are in our actual community doing great things. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, they own nonprofits, they own businesses, they work at schools, they're running for office. I mean, there's, you know, you just, all, all, all the gambit. And that has allowed us to move in ways we wouldn't otherwise be allowed Mm -hmm. to move in. And or be in rooms we would not otherwise be in or be mentioned on social media when we right. otherwise would not be mentioned strictly because we put our hand out and said, hey, we think that you have a story to tell and we would love to share it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Highlighting others is, is essential as well. Just building that connection because that's why we named this the Social Plug Podcast because we're all plugs. Yep. We're either plugged in or we're unplugged I like from, from different people. You know, it, it, it doesn't matter, but yeah. we're all connections. For sure. Um, Clifford Roy asked, <laughs> asked a question here. How important is rapport? So rapport is, rapport is huge, right? But I think it also has to be authentic. Um, you know, one of the things I will say that I um, wasn't good at but was also good at was building rapport. So when we were, were taught as recruiters, you know, it's like this whole like, oh, like, do you mm-hmm. like basketball? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about freaking basketball. What has allowed me to build record, rapport effectively is honestly just being completely authentic of who I am. I tell you what I care about. I want to know exactly what you care about. There's no like fluffiness going on, but mm-hmm. through that natural kind of learning people, I learn about your family. I learn about what you're interested in. 
I have been trained and I've paid attention enough to where you don't have to say things for me to notice things. You know, how you operate as a person. If I say something and I see a little tinge in your eye, okay, I don't need to say that again because you probably didn't like that. Mm -hmm. If I notice you sit up in your seat when I do something, you probably didn't like that. You know, um, but always being authentically me has allowed me to build rapport without really even having to think about it. Yeah. Um, but it's absolutely necessary because people have to feel as though they know you. Right. I think a lot of people get mismatched with rapport when it's like you have to build some type of falsified relationship with this person in the moment. It's like transactional. Yeah, it's, it's transactional. So, for instance, when my wife and I, when we um, were in the process of getting married, we were calling caterers and, and uh, venues. My wife is like, I don't want any of the bullshit. How much does it cost? How long can we have this? No, seriously. Hell yeah. And the person and the caterer that got us was the person that sent us their prices right away, oh. scheduled the appointment for us to do taste testing right away. And we appreciated that guy tenfold. And yeah. I get it. Some people want the like the schmooziness, but in 2024, unfortunately, people want to feel like they're being heard. And part of that hearing is is respecting their time. Right. They want instant. Results. They want. They want production. results. They want you to listen to their needs, their wants, and then provide a solution. How many times have you, uh, like, when you were looking for vendors, mm -hmm. right? How many times have you called somebody and they don't answer? You give them, like, maybe two or three minutes, and then you go to the next person. Yeah, it happens all the time. It happens with us. It happens with yep. with everybody. Yeah. So, like I said, people want the instant gratification. And you talked about the uh, the different um, generations. Yes. Gen Z. Gen Z. Yep. Gen X. And I don't know all the ins and outs. I'm, so I guess I'm a Gen X. Yeah. Well, I'm what, a, what year are you born? I'm born in 76. Uh, you're Gen X, yeah. Okay. But I want, I want hard work. I want, I want effort yep. in the people I surround myself with. Correct. I want smart people that are going to make me better yep. as well. Same, same with you. Correct. If you can't make me better in any way, shape, or form, yeah. I don't, I don't want to associate yeah. with you. It becomes lonely, too. Right. And uh, we talked about it with, uh, with one of our guests. You can't be the smartest person all the time correct i want to go into rooms where somebody inspires me yeah where somebody i'm like holy shit that guy that guy's very motivational yeah you know the david goggins the gary b's <laughs> the mm -hmm. andy Frischella's. though i wish those guys lived here in this Man. in this community <laughs> yeah be I'd, be, awesome. I'd be hanging out with those guys every day <laughs> right yeah that'd you know? be pretty awesome unfortunately we don't have those 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 mega stars yeah but we actually do Two. they just yeah. don't know it they yet. just don't know it yeah yeah yeah. You know, and that's, I'm a firm believer of lifting people and they'll eventually grow to where they need to grow. They'll, they'll, they'll get to their ceiling and beyond, man. Yeah. Your circle is everything. Circle is everything. I mean, it, it's, it's, yeah. And guilty by association sometimes too. Yep. This is true. All right. So 100%. do you have a story about anything like that? Guilty by association? Um, it happens in business. It, it, hap it happens in business a lot. Um, so, so I, I've talked about this on our podcast before too, but like a lot of people don't talk about the growth that, uh, or the, um, what is it, the um, the grief mm -hmm. that happens as you grow out of your current situation. So um, two within the last two and a half years, I am no longer friends with two of the people that I have known the longest in my life. One of them is because his actions completely did not align with my family and our actions. Wow. It may just like straight up, like put me in a situation where honestly he put my career in, in um, jeopardy and refused to apologize for it. You know, my wife called him out and he pretty much was like, well, I don't know what the big deal is. And she was like, are you serious right now? Mm. And so that cut off that one, right? The other side was um, we just have difference of opinion now. Wayne, we're just different people. Right. And we, it's okay. We no longer like, it was like we were holding on just to hold on because mm -hmm. of longevity, right? People are just like, oh, well, I've known this person so long. You know, we'll talk once a year and like we're still friends. And it's like, no, you're like acquaintances now. You've drifted away. When you have to spend yeah. like 10 hours updating somebody on like your life, you, you know, I get it. I, like you I talk wanna, once I don't in a while. Do that. But I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, what's the point? Like, okay, see you next year for our next 10 hour mm -hmm. update, right? Um, and so though, though that's one thing when it comes to the circle. As far as guilty by association, um, I don't think I honestly have been hurt by that in any way uh because it does happen to people it happens a lot of where, times where you see them on 
uh, friends of friends, or you see him in a circle when you go out or whatever, and you're like, Correct. "Oh man, that guy's a that guy's a snake." I don't, I don't, I don't think I have just because I am very. I notice I, I pay attention to everything. Mm -hmm. So like, if I feel like someone is not operating in in a space where I want to operate in, then I just, I just don't op. I'm not around that person right. whatsoever. I don't allow myself to be in those situations. Now that being said, I have been just like hated on for no reason right. many times in my career i mean when i was in the sixth grade i had a teacher lock me in a room and tell me i was going to be nothing Duh. but Damn. that that probably motivated you a oh yeah bit. i was like oh, i'm gonna show you fool Hell yeah. and, and you know but yeah i mean it was just because i laughed a lot in class i mean yeah. a lot i was a class clown but yeah i got you know <laughs> stuff like that or um you know when i was in the military early on um there was someone who was like just kind of being a dick to me. Mm -hmm. And like I had a math sergeant that took me under his wing and he was like, I don't know why you're taking this guy under your wing. And he was like, you'll see. And then an inspection happened. I got coined for being an outstanding performer, freaking killed it. And he's like, now do you see? And then me and that dude were cool after that. But it's just like, why do we do that to people? Yeah. Are people yeah. Uh, envious of other people's success? 100%. People are, people are, People are haters, man. And it's like, you, I don't know It depends on the person. It depends but, on the but person. But I've seen it way yeah. too often. Yeah. And it, and it breaks relationships up. Yep. It, it, it puts weight on people's shoulders. Yeah. It's just bad ethics. 100%. And, um, yeah, so I was, when I was in the Air Force, I, had, I was in for like five years, and I had this, this, this leader. Or, uh, you know, I'm putting that in, uh, <laughs> in, in, in quotes here. Quotes. Master Sergeant Salinas, I call him out, over okay. at, at Dias Air Force Base. He motivated the hell out of me. He told me, you know what, Johnny? Maybe you're not cut out for the Air Force. And I was already in for five years. Yeah. And in my head, I was like, fuck you. Yeah. I'm going to show you. So then I, he inspired me to go become a military training instructor. So I did that. I impacted lives. And then I became a recruiter. Yeah. I did that for 17 years. Right? For sure. But we need people like that who diss you and disown yeah. you yep. and tell you can't achieve success like the person that said you ain't gonna amount to anything yeah right and everybody has different levels of success right some people have are successful just by by waking up every morning which For is sure. which is great <laughs> and money is not always success but helping others to me is success and i've been able to help a lot of people and that that master sergeant yeah motivated the hell out of me oh, i was yeah. like i needed that because if I hadn't had that that talk from him, yep. I would have been complacent. Cr complacency will kill you. Complacency brings down nations. Yep. Uh, during 9-11, we were complacent. <laughs> uh, yep. I mean, there was just businesses. I mean, fail. There's just so many variables on that, man. Yeah. Do you think businesses fail or people quit? That's a good question. I would say more often than not, people quit. But... Ultimately, I think businesses fail because they didn't take the time to actually figure out the business. Mm -hmm. I think people, unfortunately, have really good ideas and then think that all of a sudden they're just going to make money mm -hmm. and they don't break it down. Like that, I mean, if I was to be honest, like 90% of what we do is it's, it's basic business principles. We go into a business and we're like, are all your documents up to date? Are all your processes been looked at? Have you eliminated inefficiencies? Is everything effective? Or, you know, are, is the communication correct? It's all basic stuff. Yeah. But unfortunately, life, life, life be life. In. As yeah. I, I, I feel like I've heard that phrase way more lately. I don't know, <laughs> if, there's like a t I don't know if there's T-shirts <laughs> out now or something, but <laughs> I hear a lot of life be life. And, and, and you know, and one of the things that, we talk, I talk about a lot is uh, people always ask me, like, how do I do all the things that I do? You know, I, um, I'm currently serving in the International Guard. We have our business. We run the podcast studio, the VA business. I have six children. I have a wife. Um, we have two dogs. I have an Airbnb. Like, but it's because I'm intentional with all the things that I'm doing. And I think there's also a time when business owners have to understand time or money. And when you grow up, and this goes back to like childhood stuff, right? If you grew up with not a lot of money, you're going to hold on to every single cent that you can. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, that is good for one time in your life and not good for another time in your life. Right. Because in order to grow, um, you're going to have to invest. Right. 
and, and investing doesn't mean money. And investing your time, time, your effort to people, yeah, yep. and investing your just your, your, your vibe, yep. your development. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's it's basics. Correct. It's basic stuff. So I know you help people that uh, learn yeah. those, those, those uh, attributes on your forward learning group. Yes. As well. So your your forward learning group is that kind of like it's a business consulting yes type. So you go in there and you and you hash out, hey, you guys uh, aren't meeting uh, your your numbers this month. Yeah. Do you get you get deep in the weeds? Oh yeah, on we that? can get we can get we can get as macro or micro. I mean, like we have packages based off right. So like some of them range from or three main ones are three months, six months, and twelve months. Okay. Um, and the reason we do that is because it's all about like how into the weeds do we really want to get with people in yeah. their organizations. We can come in and do, I would say, more surface level things if one funds are an issue or if you just want to make sure you're good and you want someone to kind of do like an audit. Right. Um, all the way to like, you know, we're slight, pretty much embedded in your business um, in some form or fashion for usually three main goals. So you're in depth. We can get in depth. So like, for instance, we have a... a my one of my mentors, he owned um, a software company, sold it, and but one of his things is he does he does consulting in a manner, okay. but he's already said like, but we don't want to be in the weeds at all. Like we're not here to actually the surface level. We want to like we're we're here as a support, like mentally and psychologically for like the the people at the top, so that they can have someone to talk to, someone who can relate. But we don't actually want to go in and like talk to staff and like fix any problems. Well, that's what we do. We'll actually go in there and we will do staff trainings once a month, once every other week. We'll actually go in there and say, show us your entire process from how you find a client to how you close them to how you retain them. And we'll break that whole thing up. Right. All that. And you talked about their business priorities and things yep. like that. So it's priorities um, in, in the family. Let's, let's get into that topic. Okay. Okay. So you mentioned all these different things. You're a business owner. You're a member of the military. Mm -hmm. All these things. But you're also a husband, yep, father, yep, and I'm 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 a believer. You can't because we always say when we're in the Air Force, how do you balance? Yeah, family life balance. There's no there's balance. No, there's no such thing. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's what do you prioritize at this circumstance Correct. or this situation? So how do you prioritize your family in the whole scheme of things? Communication, like you know. Um, so I'm divorced, and you know I have three children. My wife is divorced, has three children. And so when we came together, like our biggest thing was like we had we had the ugly conversations. It wasn't like, you know, people joke because we were really into each other. But there's like, oh, you're just in the honeymoon stage. And I'm like, no, this is from us mm -hmm. having really shitty conversations at the beginning. Like, what are your boundaries? What are the things that you're not OK with? What are we both going to agree will not happen in our house? We you know, we don't yell. No matter how much we disagree, because I don't want I, I don't communicate like that, and that's not respectful to you, and that shit ain't respectful to me. And the kids, and it's not, and I don't want my kids seeing that. And so, um, that's you know that's a communi communicating when I have to work late, um, bringing my kids into the business. You know, my oldest daughter, she helps. I'm teaching her how to run the podcast. She does all the switching and stuff right now. She knows how to set up the cameras. She knows how to test the audio. And I, and I pay her. So, like, bringing them into my... Now all my kids are like, Dad, when do I get to work? <laughs> and I'm like... And, and then my awesome. seven-year-old son's like, I want to set up the cameras. And I'm like, yeah. bro, brush your teeth on a daily basis, then we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, yeah. and so, like... But honestly, it's just, like, really, commu like, really communicating as much details as you can so that there's never a question of what's going on. Um, and, that's, and that's not just from, like... And so my wife doesn't think I'm out doing weird stuff, but it's just so she feels like she's also involved in it too. Yeah. She has a job. She got stuff going on. We run the Airbnb together. And so um, really making sure, though, that I make time for them. Yeah. You know, there are times when it's not. Like my daughter told me the other day, she said, hey, Dad, I feel like you haven't really hung out with us lately. And I said, I understand lately it's been a little busy. Like between my uh, Air Force job, between... The podcast on the weekend, I understand it's been a little busy, um, but it, it won't it won't always be like that, and right. you know it won't always be like that. Right. And so even just being honest with my kids, hey, I know dad's been out a little bit the last couple of weeks. Next Saturday, like let's go do something. Yeah, you know stuff so, like that. Yeah, having that that communication is yep. is essential. Now you're a better man than me because I've I've 
I tend to yell at my at my <laughs> at my kids sometimes. I think, oh, I mean, I, I, think, I, I, think, I yell at my kids sometimes, yeah. but me and my wife. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm over here thinking I'm like, man, shit. How do you do it without without raising your voice? Yeah. So I, I've been yelling since I was a, a drill instructor, and and, and yeah. well, even before we, that, we ha- we hang out with people, and people are like, why is he yelling at me? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not yelling at yeah. you, dude. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, I mean, it's just being. A, you know, I will say like it. There are days when I probably yell more than I want to, and I, but I also like internalize that too like I, I have a lot of conversations with my wife like you know i feel like this week has just been i just been like real agitated mm-hmm. or i feel like maybe i've yelled at the kids a little bit more than i yeah. should be yeah and so um so that's personal responsibility um i'll be honest i don't apologize to my kids when i do that mm-hmm. you know and i don't and i don't do that only because personally um i did it in that moment whether good bad or ugly and I'm big on actions. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, if I recognize that maybe it was too much, then this week I'm or next week or whatever, I'm really gonna make an effort to like like chill it out. Yeah. And and what's the what's the age gap or age range of so, so seven to twelve okay. is in our it lives in our house currently and then our seventeen year old lives in um, Southern California. Okay. Yep. So yeah, so and then you know, my kids are at their mom's house um fifty percent of the time. So the other thing too is we're also we're also battling two different standards at two different houses. Gotcha, and that's that's a tough one too, man. That's a hard one in itself, right? Because um, mm. the standards are I I run a tight ship. Like mm-hmm. um, my kids do chores, my kids do their laundry, my kids walk the dogs, they clean the dishes every night. They are in, you know uh, their electronics shut off at eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. You know um, at you know at their mom's house are different rules. Right. And so sometimes we have to battle that dynamic. Um, not not as much anymore. Um, but mom lets us. Uh, we don't get that, that anymore. But you, you did um, it we, at one did, point. We did at one point. And that's just like, that was a lot of the kids learning what the boundaries were mm-hmm. between the two households, right? Mm-hmm. You know, when, when my, my ex-wife and I divorced. And so them figuring, but now they know. Now they know what the standards are. And we don't really deal with that. Uh, anymore it's more so just and it's also just a communication thing hey that might be okay at your mom's house but this is my house and here we don't do that I mean, I, man I'd say that a little bit differently <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't give a rat's ass <laughs> that's what they say well like you know um, and, and that's communi- and that's like the communication too right it's like me and their mom like we we communicate very well about the kids and that's it yeah. There ain't nothing else. Yeah. That's a good that's a good way to have it though, because I mean, obviously the communication with your kiddo, like I love my parents to death, great hearted people, but they never did that. And then as I grew up, there was really no discipline in a way. To, yeah. I'm not I wasn't a bad kid or a bad person, but there's a lot of things I wish I had discipline with. So it's good for them to learn that now. Yeah, and I mean in today's age, I mean I tell my kids, I'm like, bro, you're gonna be miles miles ahead of all these other kids because yeah. I got I mean, unfortunately I have more friends than not who's 13 and 14 year olds like barely know how to load dishwashers. Right. Yeah. And you know, to, to each their own, I, I judge none. Um, but that will not be my children. Yeah. Yeah. My mom taught me how to do stuff growing up and it has, you know, saved, saved my life yeah. and how, because I can operate effectively yeah. by myself. Yeah. Make decisions or, or even cook cook. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's so like my, my eight year old daughter is like, we taught her how to make eggs. And now, every, I mean, that girl's taking them down because like, <laughs> but I know that's also yeah. a confidence thing for her yeah. right now. She gets to use a stove. She gets to use a hot pan. She gets to cook a meal for herself. Yeah. It's empowering her. Right. Yeah. And it took us a little while to get there, but at the end of the day, like you have to empower your children in some form, like some form or fashion. Like I think my mom was over at dinner the other night and my son was like standing on the counter putting glasses away. My mom was like, oh, he... I was yeah. like, what's wrong with yeah. you? And she's like, yeah. oh, I'm just afraid he's going to fall. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I used to do that same thing when I was a kid. You yeah. didn't give a shit. And she was like, oh, well, there's like a water thing. And I was like, dude. And it was funny because then my <laughs> other daughter was like, he'll be fine, Grandma. Yeah. And I was like, that's, that's right. What's right. <laughs> dude, dude, I've seen a lot of young people get married, like 22, 21 yeah. years old. And neither one of them... I got them, married, I think, at 22. Neither, but today, neither one of them know how to cook. Yeah. Neither one of them know how to wash Uber or Eats anything is like ki- that, is man. killing it off yeah. that, those couples. And they're still not making money. <laughs> yeah, and and, and yeah. it's it's incredible. Yeah. Um, well, that, bring, that brings the communication thing up, too, right? So, like, my wife and I, at one point, like, I get really antsy about what's going to be for dinner. 
Mm. I've just been like that since I was a kid. Like, woman, where's my damn yeah, dinner? Yeah, my mom picked me up. Right. Well, like, if she doesn't, if I don't know what's going to happen, like, I'll start cooking. But I don't like cooking when I am being, like, waited upon. Like, you know, my kids are all right. like, well, they want to eat dinner, right? And so my wife, however, is really good at cooking very quick with minimal mm. ingredients and mm. making, like, a legitimate meal that's healthy, everything. And so like, we had a conversation. I was like, look, we got to figure this out because I don't like cooking. I don't like grocery shopping. Like you, I, I need you to cook, but you tell me what you need so we can like make this happen. Right. Mm -hmm. And now like, that's what happens. Right. But I also had to like, let go because then she's like, but you also can't be asking us for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> like dinner will be ready yeah. by five 30, yeah. but you're going to shut that ass up and yeah. wait for it to be ready. And I was like, right. yes, ma'am. <laughs> hey, ramen noodles are good. Ramen noodles are good. You really? and peanut butter and jelly. And peanut butter jelly. Yeah. <laughs> Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> Dude, I'm one of those, I don't give a shit what I eat. It's yeah. my wife can make anything and I'm going to eat it. I'm the same way. My wife's like, oh, you like it? I'm like, I love everything you make. Yeah. You know why? Because I didn't have to make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as there's no pickles, mustard, I'm good. Oh, no pickles Sorry, and mustard. Oh, man, that's it's the best pickles. right there. My that's man. the best on burger right I'm there. I'm a jam. That's a whole nother yeah. podcast. So. <laughs> What's funny is I do like Thousand Island sauce and stuff like that. It's okay, weird. like a like a Big Mac? Uh, I don't eat from McDonald's. I never had a Big Mac with are, like all the stuff on are you, it. Are you one of those healthy guys? Um, not entirely. I just I just know McDonald's is horrible. You're just like I stay away from McDonald's. <laughs> uh, so it I tastes good, but it's it shitty. It used for to you, taste man. good. Yeah, I don't even feel like it tastes good anymore. No, no. Well, the burgers are getting smaller. They're too. getting smaller yeah. and smaller. And the like, fries are getting saltier. It, exactly. Yeah. It's like uh, if I do eat, you know, I'm an In-N-Out in -N -Out Burger guy. Oh, well, you're you're. I'm from, from California. Cali. California. That's my thing. So you don't like Whataburger? So here's my thing. I have only had Whataburger once in Mississippi. Uh -huh. I have been told you have to have it in Texas, and there is one down the street from my hotel. Yeah. If I try it, I'll let you know. You need try. to try it. Yeah. Try, okay. try the number one yeah. with cheese. Number one with yeah, cheese? Number one with cheese. That's the, that's the OG. Go. The OG? Just, I yeah. think Burger King's calling their, their Whopper the OG now, right? Yeah, you just got to be careful, though, because the, the number one's got mustard, so make sure you take yeah, that okay. out. No and must, no musties. <laughs> and, 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 no, and, no, and no pickles. Yep. Yeah. And but, yeah, nothing against In-N-Out, but I, I had it. Uh, I was forced to eat it, like, two weeks ago. <laughs> Dude. So my For the first time? No, no. Well, my, oh, my, okay. my wife and girls wanted to, Dad, I want In-N-Out. I'm like, that sucks. And I said, all right. And uh, I think we ended up making a TikTok out of it or whatever. Okay. I, we did like a, um, you know how the... the Texas trend. boy eats in and out right. <laughs> <laughs> J-Rock, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you look? know, the taste test or... Uh, oh, yeah, where you're just t tasting it. And yeah, just and I said, this what you sucks. Oh. <laughs> no matter how it would have tasted, though, I would have said it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Faithful to the end. Yeah, yeah. What a burger, yeah. damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, so you have a lot of, a lot of stuff on your plate. Yeah. Business owner, all these different things. Are you stressed out at, at all in any way, shape, or form? Uh, and if you said no, you're fucking lying. I'm a liar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have my days. There are days where I would say I feel probably a little bit more overwhelmed than not. Like like my wife and I saw this joke. It, it was ADHD. I'm pretty sure I have undiagnosed mm -hmm. ADHD. And it's like ADHD people doing like complicated tasks. And it's like, mm -hmm. do, 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 do. And then it's mm -hmm. like, ask, hey, like, where are we going after this? It's like, ah! <laughs> but sometimes it gets to that point where like it's in something will get really simple and because of everything that i have going on i'm like what the fuck yeah yeah um but i think that really comes down to internal talk mm. there are many you know believe in what you want um i'm not necessarily religious but i do believe in the devils that try and get in your mm -hmm. mind right and so I have fought, fought, uh, found myself at times thinking negatively and I literally tell myself out loud, nope, not doing that. And then I reroute my thinking entirely. And that's because as we all know, your brain's the stupidest thing ever because it'll believe whatever you tell it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in those moments when I feel as though I'm getting overwhelmed, I'm either telling myself, stop, because you're just being overwhelmed, take a breather, and or maybe whoever I'm being overwhelmed by, I'm just honest with them. You know, like there's times where like my wife will message me while I'm in the middle of something and wants me to do go down this rabbit hole. Right. And I'm like, I can't go down this rabbit hole with you right now. Like, and you're stressing me out. I need yeah. you. I tell her, like, I need you to stop. You can talk to me later about it. Now is not the time. Dude, you're brave. <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> like shout out to my wife. Like yeah. we, like. I can honestly say there's like unconditional communication between the two of us. Um, is it, do we always agree? Uh, of course not. 
But do we always um, listen to one another? 100%. And it's always non-combative. But that's what we agreed upon when yeah. we got mm-hmm. together. Very I, was, beginning. Yeah. I was like, look, I'm not going to sit here and yell at you. And I don't want you to do either with me. If you do that, I'm going to shut down. You're going to shut down. It's not going to be good for anybody. Um, if we disagree and have to take a moment, then so be it. That's cool. Yeah. Cam and I talk about it all, all the time. Before your <clears throat> your lovers, you got to set the foundation yeah. on what you like, what your desires are, whether it be, you know, sexual stuff yeah. or, or uh, financial stuff. Yep. Your, Finances are huge. I mean, everything. You yeah. have to talk about that so there's no surprises. Yep. I mean, there's going to be surprises every once in a while. Every once in a while. But you're going to ma- uh, minimize major. it. Yep. You're going to minimize it. So, you, so she already knows what you like. She knows how you react to things. She yeah. knows your stressors. She knows everything. And you the same way with her. Yep. But I see too often where people don't even know each other and no. they get into this relationship. You see it on Facebook. In a relationship. Like, <laughs> like shit. <laughs> they just they just met each other last week and they're yeah. already in a relationship. That's how they met at the club. Yeah. I remember she got on <laughs> yeah. Long Island. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so is, is that doomed to fail? It's not doomed to fail, but the probability yeah. is going to be higher because you don't even know who the hell they are. Yeah. So you have to have those tough conversations with yeah. your significant other, with your wife, with with friends. Yeah. Your friends have to know you. J Rock has to know who the hell I am. And he, yeah. I mean, he he knows we know each other. Now I know he gets agitated sometimes. I get agitated with him and yep. yeah. and we but we're, we're we humans. coexist and we have to have those tough conversations. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um I appreciate when he gets agitated by by stuff. Yeah. You know, and usually we both calm <laughs> That's down. That's the TI item. He's like, oh yeah. come on, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Usually we both calm down yeah. and the other and, day, right? Yeah, and, the and other it, day. It's it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Um stress is a is a big thing, especially in the military today. So yeah. you being a, a military member, I know there's a stigma. Yeah. A negative stigma if you're under stress. Oh, yeah. And if you go seek some help or some counseling, mm-hmm. what do they say, Cameron? Oh, oh I'm going to yeah, get don't kicked do, don't out. Don't do it, bro. We get kicked out, yep. right? I'm going to get demoted. I'm going to do. Yeah. But it's a real freaking thing. From the four star general at the Pentagon yep. to the guy in basic training, man, sure. they're all stressed out in some way. And it's not only a military thing, it's a person. It's a, person. it's, 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 it's a, a people thing. Yep. Right? Shit, I'm stressed out. Yeah. Over some shit. And I mean, and society but, doesn't have the but tools we, to but, help. But we need we need that that stress to keep uh, those butterflies going and that give a shit yeah. element There's going. good stress and bad stress. Because if you're stressed about something, it means you give a shit. It means you care. Yep. Right? And so I think it's important. But we have, we've we had military members come on before. Mm-hmm. And I've talked to them, you know, not even on the podcast, but um, they're like, man, I'm under stress. Yeah. You know, the, uh, you know I've seen some things and I've... Uh, my supervisor mm-hmm. is being an asshole to me. Mm. And my unit, and you know, all these things going on. The they're they're pivoting to a whole nother uh, mindset, and yeah. it's a real thing. Not only in in the military, but in business and in relationships. Yeah, relationships are tough. Oh yeah, uh, and luckily for you, and 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 good on you for having that conversation because a lot of a lot of people don't, man. Well, it's it's fear, right? Yeah. I mean, and it's it's also like unlearned behavior yeah so like i tell i've told the story is like when my wife and i first started kind of dating her and um my other two kids came to spend like a week with us for like Mm -hmm. a holiday break and that's when i was going through finishing up my divorce figuring out my budget doing all these things and i was like man i can't go from from five people to like eight people or seven people and then all of a sudden like trying to figure this out or four people to seven people and so I was like, I'm going to have to ask her to help me with the budget this week for groceries and stuff. And I was so nervous because oh, I don't want her to I don't want her to think I don't want her to be here. I don't mm-hmm. want her to think I'm not financially st- stable. Mm-hmm. I don't want all these things that I didn't want her to think. Right. And I remember. But I was like, but I have to have the conversation. Right. And so mm-hmm. I in the moment I was like, hey, just know this is causing me a lot of stress. But I have to say this because if I don't like it's just it's just not going to start us out on the right foot. And so I told her, I was like, oh, I need you to help out with groceries. Um, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, well, is that really what you were stressed out about? I was like, well, yeah, because I didn't want you to think this, this, this. And it's just like a lot of times it's just a lot of those like behaviors that we've learned over yeah. time is yeah. when you speak up about certain stuff, you're going to get alienated in some right. form or fashion. Yeah, And that's a real thing, too. <laughs> it's, a, it's a huge thing. Um, society today, mm-hmm. pop culture, I mean, all the, I, I won't get into that too much. <laughs> that's a whole other uh, podcast. Yeah, but that's it's a real <laughs> thing. I mean, if people don't agree with you, they'll cancel you. And, yeah. And it's mm-hmm. a whole it's a whole stressor. We talked about it over lunch, too. Yeah. Um, comedians and yeah, it's 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 crazy, man. So 
What drives you, man? I mean, before we wrap up, we got a few, a yeah. few last questions. But what drives you to be successful, man? What, what, like, really puts a fire under your butt, and to get out there and just make a difference? Freedom. Um, in what sense? In the sense that I am the one that dictates my reality. Um, you know, when I retire from the military. I want to be able to create whatever future I want to create and then not be tied to a paycheck or benefits or, any, you know, I I'm, will be fortunate enough to have my retirement, my VA benefits if I get them, but you know, healthcare, I'm starting off on probably one of the best foots you can start off on. Mm -hmm. Right. Like when it comes to like leaving a job. Right. And so, um, but although as great as that has been, my time of working for somebody else has, has also come to an end. And it's because I know I'm more valuable not only to organizations, but also more valuable to myself. Yeah. I wholeheartedly agree, man. Like I said before, you, you've, uh, you've learned a skill set mm. that uh, is, is very valuable. Oh, yeah. A lot of people pay a shitload of money to get the skill set and the certifications and oh, the yeah. experience you have. Mm -hmm. They can't just, I mean, some people, you can't even fathom what the skill set you have. Oh, yeah. The work that's gone into the, it. The work that's gone into <laughs> it. The, the, the failure that you've had. Oh, yeah. You've had failures. A lot of no's. Dude, let's talk about that. What are some of your biggest failures? Um, when I got in trouble initially in the military, um, that was a big that was a big one for me because I thought I was gonna get kicked out. Mm -hmm. I was like, I gotta tell everyone that I got to join the Air Force and then got kicked out of the Air Force. Um, probably leaving active duty and going to the Air National Guard. So you were in for active duty or in I active duty for how long? Thirteen and a half years. Okay, so you just about I left five so, years ago. Yeah, so I left um, because of, because realistically because of my management mm -hmm. and I, and I had just been beaten down so much. By one, honestly, individual in particular, that I was just like, I think I need to focus, like, go back to home, focus on that. Um, and granted, I, and granted, I'm very um, happy that I was able to secure a full time position. So it's like failure was getting to the point where I left. Success was being obviously able to finish out my mm -hmm. time uh, with the Air National Guard. So that was really nice, right? Um, Those are kind of, I don't have a lot. I honestly don't feel like I have an extreme amount of failures. I've gotten a lot of no's, which I don't consider failures. I just consider those lessons, right? Or or just on to the next opportunity. Um, that's about, yeah. Do you think that failure is necessary to success? Um, I do. And so, and maybe, and maybe that's why... I don't consider a lot of things failures just because I know that that was just like on the road path to success, right? Like, I don't really have a lot of things looming over my head like, oh, shit, I wish I did that differently. I'm very big on like... You don't have a lot of regrets. I don't have many regrets. I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with the decisions I've made, good, bad, or ugly. Um, I'm a firm believer in that things just kind of... They happen as the way they're supposed to as far as the decisions being made, the universe has put those in front of you to, to go either A or B. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, you can't get sucked up into the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. Right. Cause it'll, it'll eat you up. It'll eat you up. Out. Right. Like, you know, like some people might say like, Oh, you don't feel like you're a failure cause you got a divorce. No, I learned many lessons from my marriage. I have three amazing children. Um, I have a wonderful marriage. Now my children have both mom and dad who are great. Although we not may not be together. They're very fortunate. Like, yeah. so no, like, I don't really have a whole lot of failures in my life because I think I'm mature enough to understand that failure is a part of life and that the more no's you get, um, in turn, turns into more yeses. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard this before. Either you win or you learn. Yeah, you win or you learn. The only time you really fail is when you quit. Correct. So there's no real losses or failures unless you freaking just straight up quit and say, you know what, I can't handle this anymore, I'm out. Correct. You know, so... It's a, it's a very delicate thing, and I like your perspective. Yeah. Um, you either you can keep going, or you can. I mean, it, it, some people think of a failure as getting told no. Yeah. Sometimes, but I think you got a resilient attitude and resilient mindset, which I like because I have the same kind of mindset. Man. Yeah. 
you can't you can't be thinking what if and all this stuff because you're, you're gonna just psych yourself out for sure and and, and you're gonna freak out agreed man. so if you were king for a day <laughs> all right president of the world what would you change it could be local or it could be huge it could be astronomical mm. damn don't say you change waterburger I wouldn't like that. No. <laughs> I would like to change it. You, uh, you like pickles and mustard. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's what we need to change. If I could change <laughs> yeah. one thing, um, the finance industry for the entire world. Okay, how so? Um, I think with so many different pieces to the pie when it comes to money, it creates a a competitive market which stunts us working together. Mm. If everyone's too concerned about their currency being worth more than the other. You got the petrodollar, you got, you know, you got um BRICS nation, you got crypt you got all these things. They're all they're all competing for each other instead of really doing what they're supposed to do, which is look out for the people. That's a great that's a great answer, man. Uh you, you mentioned crypto. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you are you invested in? And you got a good portfolio. I got the, I got the crips. All right. All right. <laughs> I got the crips. I got the crips. So what what do you got? Uh, Can so, we speak about that? Yeah. So my big ones are H bar. Um, if you haven't looked it up, H bar hash graph, check it out. One of their board members is actually potentially being um, looked at as the uh, chair of the SEC. Okay. Um, XRP, which anybody who knows about crypto knows about XRP. There's actually a documentary coming out on Netflix about it. So I'm interested to see how it blows after the documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, Quant, it's a big one for us. I say us because my wife and I both invest in crypto. Uh, Are you a day trader or anything? I don't day tra- I used to. During the COVID, I was a penny stock guy. Okay. Um, but no, we, we're, we're big, like get it in hold and then see what happens. Um, you do Bitcoin? Uh I have twenty five dollars of Bitcoin. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and so those are like we're we're real big on what's called utility coins. Okay. Yep. And so, but you know, in the last two weeks, we've doubled everything. So I'm cool, yeah. I'm cool nice. with that, dude. I, I, <laughs> I got some Doge, man. We're going to the moon. I, yo, there was a lady. I was at so before we quit. I was at the uh, the BX with my boss the other day because mm-hmm. he came to visit me and and. Uh, we were buying something from this lady and I was talking about crypto. And she's like, wait, what? Cause I said something yeah. about Doge. Yeah. $200,000. This woman had, a she Doge must've coin. bought when it was like one cent or less something, but she, yeah, she, she started jumping up and down inside that place. Yeah. I was yeah. like, uh, yeah. apparently she's happy. Dude. I remember about three years ago, it went up to 76 cents, 77 I cents. That. Yep. I cashed out, uh, after it, it started going down after that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Shit. Yeah. I need to cash this out. Yep. But I mean, I didn't. I didn't invest a whole bunch. I mean, I I made I made made out pretty good. There you go. And then I invested a little bit more when it was down to twenty five cents. So now now I got some you know pretty good change in there. There you go. But yeah, we needed to go to the moon, man. Invest in man. Hell yeah. So do kids need to learn about finances early? Have to. I teach my kids about finances. I made my kids give me a a presentation because they wanted to buy a cricket. Okay. And I said, all right, give me a biz- give me your business you mean proposal. The, 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 the cricket is yeah. those, the things that make uh-huh. t-shirts or my daughter print. wanted one and oh. I said, cool. I thought you meant like a no, cricket. my bad. I know everyone thinks <laughs> I mean like actual cricket. Well, well I, I heard him laugh and I was like, he has no freaking yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just started laughing. I was yeah, like, yeah, wait, yeah. So, a cricket? So okay. My kid yeah. said they wanted a cricket, and I said, Give me a business proposal and I'll let the board decide. I what. love that, dude. Yeah. And that so they like cool. did research. They had a they had a slideshow. My daughter asked if she could borrow one of my ties. Oh yeah, awesome. they did a whole thing. Like Shark Tank. So awesome, it was, I mean, it was legit. We did Shark Tank in my with with the board for our business, and I mean, they didn't get the cricket, but I would have just said, "Hey, <laughs> they learned." The board said no. The board, the board yeah, said, yeah, I mean, we said no. We said no. I said no. Yeah. <laughs> I was like six hundred dollars. Awesome, I would have just loved to tell my kids, and for that reason, I'm, I'm out. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And on that note, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm Mr. Wonderful, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I don't want to be Mark Cuban for yeah. you know for unknown reasons. There you go. But I used to think uh, very highly of that guy. for unknown reasons. Yeah. So what's on your bucket list, brother? Um, travel the world. Uh, meaning, you know, once my kids are out the house, my wife and I want to jump from country to country, ninety days at a time. So that's our big one. Um, go on a cruise. 
which my wife says she's planning that for my retirement gift. You've never been on a cruise? Never been on a cruise. Some people are scared shitless of it. Oh, no. I've, I've always wanted to go on one. I just never had the chance dude. yet. And I, and I don't get seasick or anything like no, that. No, like, dude. It's, it's, it's a great thing. And, that, and that's what everyone tells me. And so that's on my bucket list. Um, and then uh, buying a house for each one of my kids. Well, you got one bucket list item checked off, being on the social book podcast. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but buying a what for your kids? Buying each one of my kids a house. Hell yeah. Now, at least what? Uh, like, a, like a mansion or at least no, just a house? just a house. Single family home. That way they can start up mm-hmm. and, under, and understand, you know, <clears throat> yep. uh, real estate. And Correct. Real estate is well, where Well, I mean, because realistically, I mean, um, it's just getting harder and harder. Yeah, it is. And so, and I mean... And, and you know who, who knows what is what the markets or what the landscape's gonna look like in dude, fifteen years, dude. Especially in California, especially where you're at, California. man. So here in Texas, of course, I mean you can buy. I mean it's gotten more expensive, but but it ain't Cali. But expensive. you can buy a house for two hundred fifty k. That yeah. same house in Cali is seven hundred fifty k. Correct. Or mm-hmm. more. Yeah. And I don't know about their taxes, but they pay state taxes oh, out yeah. there, and you're paying a shitload of money. You're probably paying seven eight thousand dollars a month mm-hmm. if you get a mortgage. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. <laughs> so I know these people in the in the in the military. They live out there. Yeah, and sometimes they have to live in poverty. Yeah, or live in the hood. They got they got to live in bad neighborhoods. Yeah, because uh, I discovered that when I was on the East Coast, I went out there and did a little survey, and we had military members, active duty military members, living in shitty neighborhoods yep. because of what they were getting paid for their monthly stipend. Correct on housing. Correct. And that's a whole other podcast as well. <laughs> but that just tells you where how people are living and how the economy is kind of upside down. So hopefully the economy kind of corrects itself. Mm-hmm. Um, you watch movies? I do. Who are some of your favorite actors? Denzel Washington. Okay. I like Denzel. So I just had this conversation with my, with my kids the other day because we play a game called um, How Well Do You Know Your Family? Okay. So Denzel Washington, Man on Fire is my favorite movie. Oh, great movie. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Um Leonardo DiCaprio, I'm a fan of Wolf of Wall Street. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, and Blood In, Blood Out. No way. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. J Rock, what do you got to say about that? <laughs> that's a, I, 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 don't, I, I wouldn't have expected that one out of you, but that's, that's a badass movie. <laughs> so, the reason I know that is because my mom was a huge fan of Benjamin Bratt going, growing up. Mm. And so, FYI, Blood In, Blood Out, I think is on Netflix or Hulu right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah, it's on Hulu right now. Yep. So who? One one last question, bro. Before we wrap up, mm-hmm. who plays you in a movie? Who plays me in a movie? A movie about your about your life, Cameron B. Macias. The documentary or the or the movie, big screen, mm. Evo Theaters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. What's uh? What's the guy? Uh, Pascal. What's his first name? Uh, what's it? he's the guy from um. The show that's on HBO. I'm trying. Uh, he's also from uh, Narcos. Is is Pascal? Something Pascal, something like that. He's one of the main actors from Narcos. I see here. Hmm. Does anybody know any of our viewers? I can't Pascal. think of his name. Pedro. Pedro. Pedro Pascal. Pedro, Pedro Pascal. Pascal. All right, we're gonna have to put a, a picture of Pedro <laughs> Pascal here. Hold on, give me two seconds. Ooh, not that one. Uh, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to let me bring it up right away. Haters, man. Yeah, it's not letting me save it right away. But he <laughs> uh, he's actually a pretty good actor. Well, hell yeah, man. Cameron B. Macias, it's been a pleasure having you on. I appreciate you. Uh, breaking bread with us, man. Uh, we had a great lunch today. Yeah. We, we were over at Oyster Bar. Check it out. Downtown New Braunfels. Great wings. About, what, about 100 feet from, uh, from Collapse Space Studios. Literally. Right in the heart of downtown yep. New Braunfels, man. So you had, uh, you had some wings, and, mm-hmm. and uh, you didn't have any adult beverages, but you had a, a water. So. Yep. so good on you, man. You practice what you preach. Yes, sir. So been an honor and a pleasure. Where else can we find you besides today here in our studio? Uh, check us out forward uh, forward learn.com. You can check out the the podcast on YouTube and all other streaming platforms, the L3 Perspective podcast, um, and then Facebook and Instagram. If you look up Cameron Macias, I'll pop up. My man, you're a game changer, you're an influencer, you're a leader. Thank you. Um, congrats on everything that you've gotten accomplished in life, and congrats, congrats for your to family. you, man. Yeah, hey, 
your your family should be your top priority, and I'm sure they are. Yes, sir. Because without them, you ain't shit. Okay. You ain't shit. Yeah. All right, I, I got him real quick. We can pull him up real quick. Here it is. Oh, you got him. There you go. There he is. <laughs> That's Pedro. <laughs> That's babe. That's Cameron. <laughs> oh, that's Cameron, right? That's, that's Cameron. Cameron in the movie. My bad. <laughs> well, Thank hell yeah, brother. It's been an honor. Yes, sir. So those of you watching, we appreciate you. We love you guys. Without, without you guys, uh, we don't exist. So keep on inspiring, influencing people out there. Uh, you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. Don't let anybody you, uh, tell you that you can accomplish your goals and your dreams. Yeah. So with that said, you are unplugged from the Social Punk Podcast. <laughs> And we'll see you next time. I got a quick question real quick. Can oh. I have a quick Johnny? Sure, sure. So who was your wrestler growing up back in the day? Who was the guy that you, you liked? I really liked The Rock. The Rock was it? That was one of the The Rock can play you as in your movie. What's that? The Rock can play you I, as you in the I, movie. I wish I was that. <laughs> <laughs> I try and be realistic. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm we're 5'10". <laughs> All right. We'll see Peace. you later.